and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to fix the error message Windows cannot find C Windows System32 run DLL32.exe uh, error message which you could find that you're running to if you're still using a Windows XP computer and basically what you're seeing on screen now is a Windows XP computer that I've built and that I've broken on purpose to show you the effect of this error message. Now, one place where you're particularly likely to run into this error message is in your control panel. Now, as I'm sure you know, the control panel has uh, a lot of important uh, apps in it that you can use to tweak and customize your system if necessary. Now, as you can see, uh, I'm in my control panel here and I'm going to try a couple of the apps. Uh, and as you can see, they're all just throwing up this error message. Um, they all flag it up um, and nothing just seems to be working. Okay. Now, the reason why you're going to be getting this error message is because the run dll32.exe file uh, is either missing, deleted, or it's been corrupted. And the run dll32.exe file is basically a file that is required to run dll files. And dll files are the little files that provide logic and functionality for the apps. And so it's quite a critical file, and if it's either been deleted or corrupted, um, it, it, it pretty much locks your system, okay, and it stops you making any changes. Now, I'm going to be talking you through how to fix this, and it's actually quite a very straightforward thing to fix. Um, and as with all my fixes, um, I'm going to be following the recommendations provided by the uh, Microsoft Knowledge Base. Okay, and this particular error is described in the Knowledge Base article 812340. Okay, and I'll be referencing that um, Knowledge Base article in the description and I'll put a link to it in the description of this video as well. Okay, so if you want to do some additional reading before you do this this fix then please do so. Okay, so how do we go about fixing it? Well, first of all, you need to get yourself a Windows XP CD. Okay? And basically what we're going to do is we're going to pull the run dll32.exe file off the Windows XP CD. Okay, and we're going to put it back into where it should be in Windows. So, first of all, you need to get your Windows XP CD and you need to put it in your CD or your DVD drive, which I've already done. Okay, and now the next thing that we need to do is find out the drive letter for your CD or your DVD drive. Okay, so the way we're going to do that is we're going to come down to start. I'm going to click on my computer. Okay, and what we're looking for is the devices with removable storage. And this will be your CD or your DVD drive after you've put your Windows XP disk in it. And as you can see here, it has a drive letter. Okay, and in my example, that's D. Now, yours could be a different drive letter. But basically, that's what we need. We need this letter over here. Okay, so once you know what your drive letter is, you can close this out. And now we've got the Windows XP disk in the drive. We know what the drive letter is, so how do we fix it? Well, first of all, we're going to come down to start to dot ex underscore. Okay, not run dll32 dot exe. That is incorrect. Okay, so ex underscore. Then you leave a space. Then and we're going to click on run, and you'll get this little run box come up. And in here, you need to type expand 
then leave a space and then it's the drive letter of your CD or your DVD drive. Now in my case that was D but again yours could be a different drive letter but you put the letter in there so it's going to be D colon backslash I386 backslash run DLL32 it's going to be C colon backslash windows backslash system32 backslash run DLL 32 okay so we're back into the system 2 dot exe okay and then we're going to press enter and you'll notice that the Windows XP disk will spin up and you'll get that little screen just pop up just let it do what it needs to do and then after that we're going to reboot the system okay so we're going to click on start and we're going to turn off computer and restart okay and Windows will start logging on